Alright, for this lesson we're going to be factoring a trinomial. So we're going to build off of what we learned last time with factoring by grouping. And these are the master criteria, the things that you will be able to do in order to effectively factor a trinomial. So we're going to do a quick review of factoring by grouping. So if you recall, when we factor by grouping, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have four terms. So if you notice, this has four terms, one, two, three, and four. And so we're simply going to group them into two binomials. Once I've grouped them into the two binomials, I'm going to look at my first binomial, and I'm going to see what the GCF of that is. What's the greatest common factor? Well, the coefficient is a 1. So a 1 and a 4, the greatest number that they have in common is a 1. And they both have an x. So I'm going to be taking out a 1x from that first binomial. And then I look at my second one, and I see that I have a negative 9 and a 36. I have an x here, but no x here, so I can't take an x out. And I always want that first term to be positive, so I'm going to take out a negative 9. That is the greatest number that they have in common. So once I do that, I take an x out of the first one. So x squared divided by x leaves me with just x, and negative 4x divided by 1x leaves me with negative 4. And then I took a negative 9 out of the second one, and what's left is negative 9 divided by negative 9 is just a 1x, and then positive 36 divided by negative 9 leaves me with a negative 4, which, if you notice, they now share an x minus 4. So that's what they have in common is x minus 4, and what's left is x minus 9. So that is my factored answer. All right, I'd like you to go ahead and pause the video and try this second example on your own. All right, hopefully you got x plus 1 times 5x plus 1. If you have them in the opposite order, it doesn't matter which order the binomials are. It just matters that it's 5x plus 1 and x plus 1. If you did not get that, you need to pause the video and let me know. All right, one of the skills that we need is to be able to identify the factors, and we've been practicing this, but what are the factors of 6? What are the numbers that multiply to be 6 and add to be 7? So what I want you to do is pause the video and see if you can come up with these values on your own. All right, look this over and see how you did. If you have any questions, let me know. One more subskill is to be able to identify the A, the B, and the C of a given trinomial. So this is pretty straightforward. The A value is always the coefficient with the x squared term. So if you notice in this first one, A is 21. The B value is always the coefficient with the x to the first power term. So in this case, it's positive 8. And then the C value is always the constant on the end. And remember, we want to keep the signs with them. So that would be negative 4. So when we look at this second example, my A value is what's with the squared term, so 2. My B value is what's with the x to the first term. So in this case, there is no number there, so it's a positive 1. And then my C value is my constant. In this case, it's negative 6. So go ahead and pause the video and identify the A, B, and C of this last term. Hopefully you got 4, negative 15, and positive 9. All right, so we have practiced these three master criteria, so now we're going to work on the remaining ones. So I want you to look over these six examples, and I'm giving you the original problem, and then I've rewritten the problem in the second part. So original problem, rewritten. See if you can come up with how I got from the original problem to the rewritten version. See if you can come up what, with what I did to get that. So what I noticed is that the first term was the same and the last term was the same. And I noticed that this middle term, or the B term, if I took a positive 6 plus 2, I get a positive 8m. So positive 6m plus 2m gives me 8m. So let's see if that holds true. So x squared, so the A and the C term stayed the same, and if I took a positive 7x plus 2x, I still have 9x. 
So what's happening is I'm taking that B term and I've turned it into two values that when I add them together, they give me that middle term. So go ahead and check over and see if that stays true. And the reason I did that is because we can't factor this but we can factor this. Remember to factor by grouping, I need four terms. So what we're gonna be doing in this lesson is we're gonna be taking three terms and turning it into four terms that are still equivalent because negative nine X minus eight X is still negative 17 X. So I've not changed the value of the original problem. All right, so these are the guiding questions that we're gonna use. It looks like a lot, but what I wanna point out is you already know how to find a GCF. You already know how to do A times C and give you B. So you're looking for the factors that add to B that bottom. That's the diamond. You already know how to group the two binomials. You already know how to do the rest of these. So all we're actually doing is we're adding in three new steps, and you can do that. All right, so I'm going to work through this first example, and I'm going to use those guiding questions. So the first thing that I do want to ask is, is there a GCF? So when I go over to my problem, I see that my coefficients are negative 6, negative 3, and 18. And I know that the first term always needs to be positive, so I know I'm taking out a negative. And I know that 3 can go into all three of those values. So I am going to take out a negative 3 to begin with. And when I divide that negative 3 out, I'm left with 2x squared plus 1x minus 6. So my next question is what is a, b, and c? So a is 2, b is going to be 1, and c is negative 6. So I'm just going to write those over here. a is 2, b is 1 because there's no coefficient, and c is negative 6. So I've answered that question. My next question is what is a times c? So I want to multiply a times C, so I'm looking for negative 12, the factors of negative 12, and I want them to add to be 1. So what is A times C? Negative 12, and I'm looking for the value of B to be 1. So now I'm just doing my factoring diamond. So what are the factors of A times C? So what are the factors of negative 12 that when I add them together, I get a positive 1? Well, I know that negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, but negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So I'm actually going to just switch those signs because positive 4 times negative 3 gives me negative 12 and positive 4 plus 3 gives me 1. So I found those factors. So my next question is how can I rewrite the trinomial? So if you look over here, remember I have this trinomial and I need to turn it into four terms. So I'm going to do what we call bust the B. I'm going to take that middle number and I'm going to turn it into these values. So the A term stays the same. And then I'm turning the positive 1x into 4x minus 3x and the C term stays the same. So what I've done is I've taken these numbers over here and I've just taken that x value and turned it into those values with the x because the 4x minus 3x gives me 1x. So now I have my four terms and I can start grouping them into two binomials. The GCF of this first one is 2x. The GCF of this is going to be a negative 3. So when I take out 2x, what remains? So 2x squared divided by 2x is x. Positive 4x divided by 2x is 2. And then I took out a negative 3. So negative 3x divided by 3 is a positive x. And negative 6 divided by 3 is a positive 2. And that's what I wanted because now I have x plus 2 they have in common. And when I divide that out, what remains? a 2x and a minus 3. And then I can't forget that I took out a negative 3 to begin with, so that negative 3 has to come down here, and that is my factored bino trinomial. All right, so let's go ahead and practice on this one. My first question is, is there a GCF? So when I look at the numbers 7, negative 20, and negative 3, 
there is no number that can go evenly besides 1 into all of those. And my first term is positive, so I don't need to take out a negative. So no, there's no GCF. All right, then I'm going to ask myself, what's A, what's B, and what's C? So A is 7, B is negative 20, and C is negative 3. And then I'm going to ask, well, what's A times C? So 7 times negative 3 is negative 21, and B goes right down there. So now I'm asking, what are the factors of A times C? So what are the factors of 21 that when I add them together, I get negative 20? So I'm thinking about to get a negative, they, one has to be positive and one has to be negative, and the bigger number needs to be negative for me to add them together and get negative 20. So I know that negative 21 times a positive 1 gives me negative 20, and negative, one, negative 21 times 1 gives me negative 21. So I found them. So I'm essentially busting my B, taking negative 20x, and I'm going to rewrite it as negative 21x plus 1x. So my A term stays the same, and then I'm rewriting my B term with a busted B. You can put that 1 in there if you need to. And then I want to go through my grouping and factoring. So I grouped them. The GCF of the first one is 7x. And then when I look at the second binomial, a 1 and a negative 3, the most they have in common is a 1. So I've taken out a 7x from my first term. So 7x squared divided by 7x leaves me with x, or 1x if you need to put it there. Negative 21x divided by 7x leaves me with a negative 3. And then I took out a positive 1 from my second binomial. So 1x divided by 1 is just x, and negative 3 divided by 1 is negative 3. Um, so do the binomials have anything in common? They both share an x minus 3. And what remains when I divide that out? 7x plus 1. And I did not take a GCF out at the beginning, so that's my answer. All right, so for example three, I want to go through this together step by step, and I'm going to have you pause the video as we go. So the first question is, is there a GCF? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find the GCF. So hopefully you saw that I could take a two out, and that gave me smaller numbers to work with. All right, now pause the video and find A, B, and C. So hopefully you found A to be 4, B to be negative, negative 15, and C to be 9. All right, now go ahead and fill out your diamond, finding A times C and listing B. Hopefully we're you got that we're looking for the factors of 36, that when I add them together, I get negative 15. So go ahead and see if you can find the factors of A times C that add to be B. So hopefully you were able to see that negative 12 times negative 3 is positive 36, but negative 12 plus negative 3 gives me negative 15. All right, so now pause the video and see if you can identify how to write it with a busted B. So how can I take this and turn it into four terms? All right, so you should have gotten either 4x squared minus 12x minus 3x plus 9 or 4x squared minus 3x minus 12x plus 9. The order that you put these in doesn't matter. It just matters that you keep the signs. All right, so now you're going to pause the video and I want you to group the two binomials and go ahead and divide out the GCF. Go ahead and continue this process. So hopefully you were able to factor it all the way down and you ended up with x minus three and four x minus three. And don't forget that we took that GCF of two out at the beginning, so I bring that down and put it out front. So if you did all right with this problem, go ahead and move on and try example four. If you didn't, I need you to raise your hand and let me know. All right, so look this over and see how you did. If you get it right, move on to example five. All right, so look it over and see how you did. If you got it right, go ahead and move on to example six. All right, so this one is a little bit different because if you notice, there are only two terms. And when I look at them closely, I see I have the x squared term. So I have the a and I have the constant on the end. So I have the c. So in order to do this, I'm going to have to rewrite it to begin with, with my a. And there is no b term. So how do we show nothing in math? Zero. 
So I'm going to rewrite it with zero as the B term. So when I go to identify my A, B, and my C, um, I'm going to use A is 16, B is zero, and C is negative nine. And then I'm going to continue going through this process just like I would. So I'm going to multiply A times C. So 16 times negative 9, and I get negative 144. So I'm looking for the factors of negative 144 that give me 0. So if I add two numbers together and they give me 0, um, I'm probably looking for the same number. Um, so the factors of 144 stick out at me because 144 is a perfect square. And I know that 12 times 12 is 144. And in order to get a negative 144, one is negative and one is positive. So when there's no B term, these numbers are going to be the same and one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. And this number is going to be a perfect square. We're going to talk more about that later, but that's what we're looking for when there is no B term. So go ahead and pause the video and finish this problem out. All right, so hopefully when you got it factored out, you ended up with 4x minus 3, 4x plus 3. Again, those don't have to be in that same order. You might have 4x plus 3 and then 4x minus 3. All right, go ahead and move on to example 7. All right, so x squared minus 25, I notice it's a little different. It only has those two terms like the last example. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can come up with the process. All right, hopefully you ended up with x minus 5, x plus 5. Go ahead and move on to example 8. All right, see how you do on this example. All right, so hopefully you got 2r minus 3 times 3r plus 2. And we have one final example, so go ahead and try example 9. All right, so hopefully you were able to see that you could take out a negative 2 at the beginning and then bring it back at the end, and you end up with x plus 7, x plus 2. All right, so we can factor out a GCF. We can pick out a, b, and c. We can find the factors of a times c that add to b, b. You've learned how to bust the b or turn it into a, a polynomial with four terms, and you can factor by grouping. Congratulations.